If you frequent local news websites, you might have come across a tempting piece of clickbait, a rogues gallery of mugshots of recently arrested people. Now some news organizations are rethinking the practice. Mugshot galleries are easy money for local newsrooms. The more clicks, the more eyeballs for advertisers. In Albuquerque, KRQE offers one-stop surfing by putting the mugshots on a simple scroll page. Other sites like Springfield's WWLP makes you click on the photos one at a time. The practice doesn't sit well with some news people. I think that once you start sort of evaluating whether you should have mugshot galleries, it really opens the door to all these other questions. Should you also rethink the use of individual mugshots? Because this is all a very different game when you're on the Internet. That's it crime reporter Carrie Blakinger, who knows what it's like having your mugshot out there. As an Ivy League college student high on heroin, she was arrested for drug possession. It wasn't until after her prison term that she realized how permanently damaging a mugshot can be. I got a lot of hate mail when I got out. I got a lot of people telling me that, you know, I deserve to die, that I was, you know, that I looked like, well, things I probably can't say on the air. Blickinger acknowledges there are many legitimate uses of mugshots in news, but not as clickbait. After she visited the Houston Chronicle recently, the paper announced it would no longer post slideshows of people who have been arrested but not convicted. And WCPO in Cincinnati says it's now limiting use of mugshots in its newscasts. It certainly raises questions about what we make, uh, what we as the media make people think of each other when we put these out there. It got us thinking. I have to say I was naive to this. I'd never heard, I mean, I've seen mugshots, but I didn't know. There are whole websites, mugshots.com. They're just voted. And by the way, people have to pay to get their name, get their pictures taken off of them. And then they just get sold to somebody else. But I didn't realize that this is a phenomenon with local news, that newspapers more in particular make a lot of money off of this. That sounds like a real shakedown racket. <laughs> make you pay. Oh, yeah, no, that is a shakedown. Yeah, yeah I mean, come on. So that that's absurd and, mm. and heinous. Uh, and I, I think the objections are, are definitely worth noting, and mm. I'm glad to see some news mm. organizations are trying to be mm. responsible about it. But let's be honest about this. Um, this is a problem that is destined very soon for the rearview mirror as deep fakes and photoshopped photos take over the internet. I mean, this this in hindsight fairly soon will look, look to be one of the, among the least of our problems in terms of protecting people from endless character assassination. Now, that's not to say we shouldn't take this seriously and be responsible about it, but you know, also over the years, I've heard people claim we shouldn't print the police blotter. Hmm. You know, that someone who's just been charged with a crime shouldn't have their name and address posted in a local paper. Well, you know, that's public information. It's information of interest. I think we need to proceed with caution. That's a fine line. I think for me, the, there's a key difference between the police blotter and the, the mug shots gallery. Mm -hmm. The police blotter, yes, it's information. Yeah. It's there. There are words. A lot of people aren't just clicking through it for entertainment. They aren't clicking through it to say, you know, these people are terrible. I'm better than this. Um, with the mugshots, your face is out there. You've been arrested. You haven't been convicted of anything. You haven't been found guilty of anything. Um, but you, the charges can be dismissed, and it's still, still there, there, part of that gallery. Yeah. And that just seems wrong, and it will disproportionately affect people of color yeah. because depending That's on right. where you are, most of those faces mm -hmm. are not pale. I absolutely yeah. agree with you. The police bl blotter is information. Mm -hmm. This is what we did last night. Here's who it is. But the pictures are something else, particularly for those people who have not been convicted. Mm -hmm. Now, some people can argue they've been convicted. You know, if we want to go back to our files and say we're doing a story about whatever. But I don't, they're not even using these photos for no, stories or no. any kind of legitimate way. Right. Not, you know what I mean, uh, legitimate story way. This is just, let's just make space. Yeah, it's just, sell you know? it's just selling ads. It's just voyeurism, plain and simple, yeah. too. And it, this is why I'm not sure that... Uh, your point about deep fakes being <coughs> completely terrifying is well taken, but I'm not sure that the impulse to look at these sorts of things will ever go away because, as you said, 
It's about looking at someone in a moment of duress when they are, maybe they've done something horrible, maybe they haven't. They are at their most vulnerable and to, to sort of, it's like watching someone out in the cold on a, a winter night when you're inside your home and warm sitting by a fireplace or something. Yeah. It's look at them, thank God I am not in that position. Whether or not that's how people are thinking about it, I think that's what it caters to. And I don't have any problem with people pulling back on it. Really not at all. I mean, I understood the appeal of looking at like Tiger Woods or Nick Nolte or, you know, famous people, but I don't, I honestly don't understand what anybody gets by looking through this. But I mean, I, I had a, quite a long talk, talk with Carrie uh, Blake, Blakinger about this, and um, she agrees there are times when um, it's legitimate. I mean, she said a, a minor drunken driving was probably not legitimate. I said, you know, but drunken driving is one of those things that has really been, it's so, it's we've been driven by it because so many drunken drivers have caused so much. She says, yeah, but then it's not applied evenly. You can, like, she, yeah. in Texas, she was down there, you know, mm. at the Houston Chronicle. She, it depends on... If you live in one district, you may end up on the police spot ladder, but if you're in another one, you're not going to. Exactly. So, yeah, and, that's right. And in those cases, if there's a story and the mugshot furthers the story, illustrates the story, I think that's one thing, and you have to evaluate that use differently. A gallery of all the people yeah. who had mugshots taken <laughs> last month, does, it, there's not a there's story, no story there. No. Well, then again, for better or worse, consider how deeply ingrained uh, this kind of voyeurism is in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Consider the enduring popularity of the perp mm -hmm. walk. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, that's the choice video yeah. that every uh, news organization yeah. wants to get, right? Consider, what was it, Dateline or whatever? Oh, they yeah. The, to catch a predator. Oh, my God. Yeah. That was, well, I that mean, was horrible. What, these are people who hadn't even been arrested. Yeah, exactly. I know that <laughs> cops, I mean, at least on cops, you have to sign a release form before they'll air your clip. Right. Mm -hmm. the, these people aren't yeah. giving that permission. Nothing. It's mm -hmm. public record, yes. Mm -hmm. And people have a right to public record record. I completely agree with that. But what's the point here? I don't know. Mm. 